Hey, 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 everyone. It is me back here again, Sam Anderson, a designer on the Adobe XD team, joining you live here from San Francisco. And we are streaming uh, day, ooh, what, what day are we at? Day seven slash eight. We're on challenge number seven. Our first day didn't have a challenge, so. Uh, <laughs> makes makes the numbering system a little different. But hello, everyone. I am back again today for another challenge where we're investigating and diving into Adobe XD and learning how to uh, design UX uh, apps and principles and experiences uh, with Adobe XD, as well as just uh, uh, get our hands on some uh, feedback from other designers in the community. Hello, everyone. Anna, Tim, nice to see you all. Francisco. Welcome back. Awesome. Um, it is, is great to see everyone in the chat and active and uh, chatting it up. Um, we, have, we have this challenge here today, but then two of my great friends, uh, Melody and Julian, Julian I actually went to class with, are streaming after me. So definitely stay tuned for them after, afterwards. Um, they're, just, they're just great people and they're going to be doing a, a whole longer session, much longer than, than what I have. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Daily Creative Challenge for Adobe XD, it really all starts on behance.net slash challenge slash XD. That's, that's the starting page for this challenge, and it's where you can sign up to be notified each and every morning about the challenge. And you'll, you'll get notified through the Creative Cloud app um, each morning when a new challenge is released. And so you can see here we've done a few already. And we're actually getting close to the end. Friday is our last day, uh, sadly. Um, but I have a feeling I'll be back on, on some more streams. Maybe not doing creative challenges, but uh, some other things as well um, in, in the near future. So that will be exciting. But today is all about a writing assistant app. And so we're going to, hey, Ash Ashvara from India, nice to see you. Uh, Claire from Manchester, UK, thanks for tuning in all the way from the UK. Uh, and Julia from Sweden. Oh, this is, that's just, that's lovely to hear. Everyone from all these lovely places. Um, you know, I wanna go to all these places one day. Um, so we're designing a writing assistant app and I'll show you that in a starter file, which you can download right from here. If you hit get started, you can download our starter file, um, which I designed for you to get you on, on the right setting. Um, you can learn more about XD here if you're not familiar with what uh, XD does. It's a UX design tool for designing apps and experiences. You can learn more with there. And uh, you can sign up for our community chat, which is on Discord. Hello, Andre from Edmonton. Nice to see you. Um, you can sign up for Discord here as well. And so on Discord, Discord is, is like Slack. It's like a big group chat. It's really fun, um, and I love it. And so here's what Discord looks like. Um, this is our current Dash Challenge uh, channel. And I was in here this morning giving feedback to everyone that had submitted uh, some designs. Not everyone. I, I, can't, I can't quite make it to everyone, but um, people that are definitely, um, they're sharing their designs in here. And we are giving feedback as well as we can. It's, it's a community kind of forum, right? Uh, we, we see each other's designs. We give uh, you know, praise. We give feedback, really just so we can all become better designers. And it really becomes key in that design process to, um, you know, get that feedback on our work. So this current Dash challenge becomes a really critical challenge, a really critical uh, channel <laughs> for getting feedback. Um, it's just a great place for the community to talk. And then there's other channels here too. Um, so take a look at those. Uh, we talk about the challenges each day. In this one, it's an announcement channel. You can introduce yourself. Um, everything goes on in here. And there's thousands of designers that you can talk to here. Look, Andrea is typing right now. <laughs> so it's like, it's, there's, uh, she, she's one of the mentors as, as part of uh, the Discord channel. So let's hop into XD and we're going to begin our challenge. So today we are designing um, a writing assistant app. And the idea of this app is that we wanna help people become better writers. And so we're going to together design an app that will help people um, like find the nuance in their writing and show you and show the writer where they can like really improve some of their writing or make some changes or spelling errors, things like that. Hello, Olga from Austria. Austria. Nice to see you. Um, missed that one a little bit before. I know you said that earlier, but it's all good. Um, and so not only are we designing a writing assistant app, 
uh, we're adding this flavor of a brand design to it. And so um, I think what this will really help with is if, if you can have this idea of a brand, um, what, what do you want this app to feel like and what is the voice of it? That will really help refine your design into a visual style as well. Um, so um, everything from your color choices to your typeface choice um, to how you write the copy or copy is another word for just the text that you use in your app, uh, you know, that copywriting, um, all influences the brand voice and the brand style, right? So you can make a writing app that's, um, and we'll, we'll take a look at, I have some resources here where you can, you can learn more and get some more like, uh, more insight onto, onto what this really means. So further reading. Uh, Grammarly you might be familiar with, they have, they have a, a friendly, clean uh, aesthetic um, in terms of their brand voice, and they, they don't, um, they're, they're trying to be a little friendly. Um, it's, it's, you know, pretty quiet and subdued. Hello, Galib from Bangladesh, nice to see you. And Oliver from Tyrol slash Austria, great, great stuff. Nora loves the cal color palette, I'm, gl I'm glad you like it. I really had fun with all these, uh, these colors for your starter files. Um, so that's Grammarly. Um, there's also another one I really like. I sometimes throw my writing in here before I'm done writing. It's called Hemingway App, and uh, Google that, and you can find the service if you'd like to, to try it out. And it highlights uh, things about your sentence structure and where you can improve. You can notice they're making some slight different, there's slight differences in their brand. So they're using a serif typeface um, and a, a slight off gray background. Um, and some nice subtle colors. It's, it feels a little bit more sophisticated, uh, perhaps more educational uh, focused, academic focused, um, which is totally all right as well. And so they're both two different styles to a similar uh, feeling app and a similar function. And so for when you design yours, you can choose whatever direction you want. It could be aimed at any demographic you want. It could be very uh, academic or it could be like a business writing app. Um, and it could be really like sleek and professional, or it could be uh, fun and whimsical, if if that's kind of what you what you're hoping for. And so I have some some text. This is uh, a, an assignment uh, from one of my writing classes that I just threw in here. It was just a really quick, um, little quick creative writing assignment. It's actually about the Adobe Office <laughs> um, in San Francisco, our old one, uh, just down the street from where we're streaming, and. Uh, you know, it was, it was fun to like, just really capture that environment. And the idea here is that our writing app is, the user is, is writing this message and we're going to give feedback to uh, whoever's uh, writing it. We have, Andre is a, is a fan of, of Grammarly. If there's anyone else uh, that's using, if you're using any kind of writing app, how, how are you using it? What are you using? And um, like, what are some of your favorite features in, in that? in those apps. Um, so I think we're going to, so we have some content here. I, I suggest you either write some content or find some content that you can work with as well. You don't want it to be perfect because that's not the point. Uh, we need to have some suggestions that we can throw in, in there. Um, so we're going to start on fonts.adobe.com actually first. And so, um, because we need a typeface for our design. In previous uh, challenges, I've just been using Halyard uh, typeface, the Halyard family which is a solid typeface, but I think we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm not opposed to doing anything that's uh, san or serif. Serif is, is the typefaces that have these little like feet and hats <laughs> on the top and bottom of them. That's a serif typeface. Sans serif is like uh, this one or this one where they don't have those little feet or hats, um, <laughs> which is a, a little metaphor you can use uh, to understand like what those little markings are. Um, but on here, you can sync fonts uh, to your Adobe account and use them in, in XD. And so you can really think about like, oh, what, what's, the, what's the feeling? And then the feeling I'm thinking of is a slightly more academic, probably leaning towards the side of um, Hemingway app in terms of uh, like a refined style that, that's using a serif typeface, a little bit more hinting back to print design. So I kind of like this Alda one. And so I will open this up. Look, it has a really gorgeous italics. Look at that. It's a light italic. I love that. That's a gorgeous italic. Um, serif fonts always have nice italics. And so I'm just going to flip this switch here to activate 
uh, those typefaces. And I think we're, we're going to use those because I, I like them. And feel free to use another one. Maybe if you're doing a more friendly design, you can use um, a more rounded, more rounded typeface. Uh, but for big body text, try to stay away from anything that's um, like, that's like handwritten style or that's too complex. Uh, you know, it just becomes hard to read. Uh, and the key point of having text is so that it can be read. And so um, whenever choosing a typeface, readability is always going to be your number one concern. Um, so <laughs> Tim is saying, hats, I can feel the type designers getting mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, that's kind of what they are. They're, they're, I mean, the technical term is serif, but you know, they're like little hats for the characters, basically. <laughs> um, um, and so what was the name of that? It was called Alda, and that's, so I'll pull that up here, Alda. And uh, we can, let's, uh, sometimes it will take a, just a tad for it to sync up to your account. Um, I do want to make sure my Creative Cloud is running here. OK. And OK. It does, it does take a while. Let's, um, I'm just going to reload this and make sure I am on the correct uh, account here. I'm going to, sometimes you have to also restart XD um, to, to get these fonts activated in here. Okay, I'm just going to uh, actually just save this document real quick and open it back up. Um, okay, and let's see if it works this time around. If not, we can use any of the other uh, system fonts too. Okay, yeah, that one's not working. It should for work for you. If, if you do have some difficulty with uh, some of these, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try to um, you know, fix that up. A great other typeface, PT Serif, which I already have on my sh machine, uh, is a great one. In fact, I think the issue that I'm encountering is, is just an Adobe account, because I'm an Adobe employee. We actually have two accounts. We have a personal account and an employee account. And uh, the one I just checked to sync uh, was my personal one. And the one I'm logged in on my computer is, is my employee one. So that's actually the issue I'm facing. But not, not a worry, because um, this typeface is also a great, gorgeous uh, Serif fight serif typeface. But that's something to keep in mind if you do happen to have multiple uh, Creative Cloud accounts. And so um, that's really great. Because we are going to be adding suggestions to this, let's increase the letter spacing. Or not letter spacing, sorry, letting. Letting is the amount of space between the lines of the, of the text. And so right now it's at 26. That's an auto set um, suggestion, and usually that automatic number looks good. But because we're going to have like little markers going in between the lines and things, we do want it to be a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big. Let's see, 40. Uh, OK, maybe just slightly smaller, 38. I can like, OK, I like that. Nice. And I'm feeling that we will have, you can get keyboards like this if you want a keyboard in your design to really just uh, level it up a little bit in terms of uh, realness. You can get that from our Apple design uh, kit, the Apple UI kit, which you can access from File, Get UI Kits, Apple iOS. You can download it from the Apple website. And so in here, um, we're starting to develop that brand. I'm feeling like it'll be a warmer uh, tone that's kind of like paper uh, slightly. Instead of black, we're going to use just a slightly dark uh, brown, maybe not so yellowy. Um, just, you know, just to give it some texture. You can even add like a layered pattern over this to give it really make it like feel papery if you wanted. Um, and let's make this just a tad uh, darker. I like that. Awesome. And then this becomes our writing space. And we're going to have suggestions over to the side. And so I'll make make it a little wider. And so our suggestion boxes are actually going to come in on the side like this, kind of like a comment. If, you ever do, if you've ever done commenting in Google, Google Docs, you know, they have its own col it has its own column over on the side. So a similar style to that, um, similar feel. And 
you know, I'm going to choose a color palette that I think works with the rest of my color. So I'm, I'm kind of doing this earthy tones, papery, papery tones with the slight yellow tinge. Um, you might want to do something more bright and animated, um, which totally works as well. And so our first comment we're going to have here for this piece of writing, which <laughs> I wrote, <laughs> um, so I'm really just critiquing my own work here, is the use of, I say light, light, and light. I just use the same word three times, um, which maybe is not ideal. I think um, uh, we could suggest like, hey, maybe use a different uh, set of adjectives. And so we can put that in there. And maybe we, with this line, we can have uh, little like marking notations. I'm just going to fix these values just a little bit. Cool. If you have uh, like decimal values, then uh, you can fix those by removing those in in the little uh, corner up here with all the other elements. So we have uh, light, light, and light. So we'll just kind of highlight where those are. You can also do maybe like an underline. Actually, that might, that might be better. Let's do that. So XD has an underline option right here. Light, light, and light. And so we're kind of signifying what's going on there. Maybe this line can be a little darker because not quite seeing it on that background. We can put a rounded cap on it. Cool. And then maybe to match that, the same color as a border on, on that. Um, actually, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not digging that as much. Um, I'll just leave it like it was. Cool. Um, you don't necessarily need a line coming from, from that box might want to do something different, or maybe, uh, you know, that could work too, because you are calling it out on, on the design itself. Um, so maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it like that. I think, I think there's a better way we could solve this problem that, you know, I don't have quite enough time to get to what that next iteration could be, but I think you could get there with yours. And so um, consider less, oh, I'm not typing. <laughs> uh, consider less uh, repeated adjectives. And for this text, we, we can reduce we can reduce the spacing. Cool. And you can also put in maybe little like features where it's giving you a score or it's actually telling you things maybe that you're doing right, like um, like great sentence length or something, like, um, or like really great verb usage, right? Um, and so maybe it actually wants to congratulate you for what you're doing well. Hefty wood beams, like, and maybe it's like um, descriptive, descriptive words, good job. Um, you, know, you might also want to include aspects like uh, what's on this other one about reading level. If you're using a lot of complex words, then maybe it's at a higher reading level. Um, and perhaps these different uh, suggestion boxes actually have different like styles, depending on if it's good or if it's bad. Um, so different ways to attack that. Um, and then there's another suggestion I want to make here which is that uh, this sentence, you know, I know, the, I know the better way to do it instead of these uh, underlines. It's to, to highlight, which is actually what Hemingway app does. Um, so we can actually just highlight the text. I think that would be better. Um, at like a lower opacity and behind the text, yeah. And maybe it's like red, because red is not good. <laughs> And it's a suggestion for something better. OK. So we can actually, I like, I like that better. And we can even, oop. OK. It's kind of hard to work with both um, text boxes and text overlaying it. 
because it gets hard to manipulate it a little bit. Um, but we can also call out, um, I'm just, I'm sending the text box to the back so I can easily pick up uh, other, more, um, more of these rectangles to duplicate the object. I'm running out of design time here, but the idea here is that this sentence is too long. Um, <laughs> that's obviously a too short of a sentence, even though it's about too long of a sentence, but you know, you could hint at something uh, that's perhaps uh, a longer description to help hint at a better, um, a better writing tool would actually give you a lot more information and perhaps even resources to uh, learn more about where better writing uh, would, would come. Uh, okay, repetitive adjectives is Andre's suggestion. Uh, which I, I agree, repetitive adjectives would definitely be a better way to, to word that. And we are talking about writing and wording here, so uh, thank you for that suggestion. Um, but uh, once, once you do have your design here, uh, think about how you can use different colors for different types of suggestions. Um, and then I would also encourage you to add a score page. How well did, was the whole piece of writing as, as a whole? And then really give them, give them a, a rating or a grade. Um, and tell them how they can improve. That will be a great next step. Um, lastly, you can hop into this little share tab up here, share for review. And if you generate a link here and you copy it, that's going to be really handy for sharing over in Discord, which we showed you earlier. So uh, paste that link in there. Um, that's actually not the link. But <laughs> paste the link in there, ask people for feedback, and give others feedback on what you think could make a more compelling writing app. Um, you know, try to do something different than what I did. You know, take your own creative freedoms as far as what this writing app is going to help you with. Maybe it's, maybe it's actually helping you with your writing as you're chatting with your friends, or so it's like integrated into like a chat app maybe, or maybe it's for academic papers for school, or maybe it's for uh, like startup language, and it's giving you all these like fun, snazzy adjectives to use, right, that like startups love to use. You can really take this in any direction. Um, but once you have that link and you have a fun design, share that uh, on Discord, then share it on Behance. So if you create a Behance project, you can tell your story on here um, and like make a really long artboard in XD and you can really talk about your goal and your design principles. Um, you can include aspects of your design. Um, this is an earlier one I made. Um, you can have a thumbnail image and you can give it a title on Behance before uh, you upload it. And this is important because it's going to be how you show off your design to everyone else. And so when you're uploading to Behance, it's going to be on your profile and everything. Um, but we also want it to show up with all the rest of the people that are submitting their designs. So in keywords, do XD daily challenge as one of the keywords or tag, keyword tag, it's the same thing. Um, so be sure to type in XD Daily Challenge into the keywords of, of your post on Behance. And then it will show up right here. Look at this page. It'll show up with everyone else um, and their app. So you can see some previous challenges that everyone worked on. And some of them have embedded videos. Some of them, you can actually embed your own prototype using the embed prototype function in XD. You can use that as well. Um, and you can see everyone else's designs here, um, which is just brilliant because we can all kind of be part of the same like design like <laughs> challenge. You know, uh, it's fun stuff, good stuff. Anyway, that's all for today. I can't wait to see what writing app designs everyone makes. Um, really have fun with it. Have a blast. Uh, just take it all out with your brand. Um, I will give you feedback as well as all the other mentors and people participating in the challenge over in Discord, um, so we can all you know become better designers and uh, you know understand these different principles in, in more detail. Um, but with that, that's all for today. I will be back here tomorrow to join you again for our second to last challenge. Friday's the last day, uh, so see you then and peace out.